Warning, this program is intended for adults of legal drinking age. Whiskey is consumed in disgust. The intent is to educate our palates on the differences of whiskey flavors and not an intent to get drunk. Please drink responsibly. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name's Andrew. And I have a confession to make. I fucking love whiskey. Hello. Joseph. Hello, everybody. I am Joseph. I... As opposed to Andrew, I just want to say that I fucking love whiskey. It is a good counterpoint. Yeah. Today, we'll be interrogating our guest, a one Mr. Gary Truesdale, a cartoonist, a director, um, a storyboard, a writer, a, a glad about town, a, a, a man gl- of the mountains. A, gl- a glad about town? A glad about or town, a, yes. Or a gad about town. No, he's a glad about town. I'm glad it's... about town. All right. <laughs> this town is awesome. Tell anybody. I'm glad about it. Gary Trustell. Oh, I, I hear I hear you have whiskey on this show. I'm I'm uh yeah, I'm, I'm we do have to some. try it. I hear it's pretty good. Yeah. It is a drink that the kids have says have said is popular. This is the young people like this stuff? Yeah. Yep. I'm yep. in. Because <laughs> you you are glad about how you're a man with your finger on the pulse of the youth. <laughs> but are you glad about whiskey? I am glad. I am fucking glad about whiskey. <laughs> hey, well, if this is your first time seeing the show, um, what we do is we taste four whiskeys, and the approximate time codes are down in the corner there. Uh, Thad's put them in. About every 15 minutes, we'll try one of the next uh, ones. And we got four today. This first one, um, Ardbeg Fermentation. Fermentation. Um, fermentation. Uh, they had uh, an outage in their boiler, and they had six washbacks that were just sitting there fermenting. There's usually fermenting seven to 10 days. These fermented for six weeks. And instead of just throwing it out, they said, Let's try. Let's try to distilling it and see what comes out the other end. This is what happened. So, so I'm super excited to try this. So just for people who might not know whiskey that well, what does the fermentation do? Like, like it's, you know, what is that step? What is that cause? That that is the thing that creates the alcohol. So the what, they're, step, what they're doing, right? yeah, they, they take the the uh, barley and they put it in the mash tun and they create this really rich um, sugar filled kind of roasted barley um, liquid extract. Taste, the, yeah. the wort, and then they add yeast into it in the big uh, washbacks, off, often made from Canadian spruce, but sometimes just metal now. Um, and then they pitch yeast in there, and that yeast ferments and makes this really low grade beer, like 7% alcohol. So that's the starting point of whiskey is that alcohol in that, that 7% mixture. So it's I would assume hot beer. I, <laughs> hot beer. It's it hot. It's hot beer. It's hot it heats beer. It up. And I mean, there's like steam and bubbles and. And I mean, these tanks are like, they're like 12, 15 feet tall with catwalks yep. around the top because it sucks out the oxygen below. And if you're walking around below there without actual oxygen, no apparatus. you will die. So this is kind of like the sourdough of whiskeys. It's, yeah, it's if the start. In a way. <laughs> it's the start. Because I'm assuming they take it out as soon as like it's ready, as, like they don't leave it in there for longer than they have to because they're like, we need to get that that tub op- empty so we can put more whiskey right yeah they need to distill it into low wines and then right. go from the low wines so this is the, just yeah so this is just it's been in there for fermented for uh for three weeks wow for three weeks instead of four days huh it's definitely interesting so, it's got the art bag nose but there's something funky going on in the background there is something funky this is like this is this is more this smells more like a Lafroig to me or something that's like you know like a like a something that's peatier and uh, than, a punch you in the face peat yeah or an Octomore it almost smells like an Octomore yeah a little bit of that subtle sweetness in it sort of thing <sighs> like how would you but this isn't like a step that would add more peat though. Like, cause that no. is like, that is when you, that is when you dry it. So that's interesting. Yeah. The peat comes like, that's like one of the first thing that happens, right? When you dry it out the. Uh, yeah. They, they, they burn the peat and that's what coats the, the, the malt with uh, the through, the, through the barley. And... Yeah. But oh. if the, <laughs> all it's, this is the equivalent of cap and crunches. Oops. All berries cereal. <laughs> yes. Sure. <laughs> Or the everything bagel, perhaps. 
from the movie, not from the. Right. I'm going to taste this. I, I got to taste this. Yeah, this is, I, I feel like. We're also starting quite high. This is 49%. 49, that, is, that is so interesting and different. Um, but also it has all those same notes that I'm, I'm used to, but, but different. It's like, it's like, it's like they went through a teleporter. It, it's not the taste of, of sponge toffee, but it's the kind of extraction um, event that happens when you put sponge toffee and it kind of sucks moisture from your, your tongue. Um, yeah. To me, it's the like- The finish a, is super nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Although there is a weird funkiness in there of something like just off or weird or chemical. Like to me, it's, it's like you took a sponge cake but with and removed all the sugar from it. I think that's the technician that was trying to get it out of the tank that he just went through. And... <laughs> like it has the light and, and, and almost sweetness of sponge cake, but none of the sweetness, but it has that sort of like, yeah, like it's, it's not it's... bread. It's like this really rich, like spongy. And it's, it's interesting because you're kind of describing it by the experience more than the flavor as well. And it, this is an experience. That's, that's a weird whiskey. Yeah. The flavor is elusive, to be honest. Like I, 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 I'm having a hard time pinning down the flavor. It's got like stuff in there. That's whiskey stuff. Like, Oh, there's some diesel. There's a little bit of smoke. There's, you know, um, there's definitely some smoke when you first, when you first take that sip, but yeah, but it's, again, it's it, when, it, when it's when it's going down, it's like, oh, it's something different now. That is, it's really neat. You know, for for people to do a show about whiskey, we should be better at describing. Well, that's what <laughs> that is. Where he's not drinking a lot of us you. today, you know. <laughs> I, I I warned you about this. Well, it's <laughs> not vodka. <laughs> If it, was, doing that. if it was an animation style, Gary, what animation uh, style would it be? <laughs> there you go. Now there's the metaphor. Effects heavy. Huh. Effects heavy. Lots of shadows, lots of uh, lots lots of um, smoke, maybe. Smoke, clouds, fire. I mean this. This this isn't this isn't a character piece. This is this is an effects heavy piece. Kind of like an anime, maybe. Yeah, an anime. I mean, this is this is a, this is a night on Bald Mountain kind of. Uh... Mm. For me, I feel like it's kind of it would be like an, an animation where the the animator is really showing off and doing a lot of like perspective and and turns and like changes but it's all it's all drawn it's like it's like drawn, yeah, hand drawn. frame by hand drawn frame hand by drawn. frame nothing computers but it's literally like it's most people are like oh that's pretty cool but if you're an animator you're like oh my god they drew all that like they're just yeah, showing yeah. off there's just leaves going by in the wind in the background for no reason <laughs> yeah. just to really right. add because that enhanced. Can. yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's like an anime but those shots that are really like oh my god they drew all of those frames by hand what the hell? That would be a Miyazaki. Yeah. 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 Just just gorgeous animation. Love of nature. Oh, this is, this is definitely the most unique art bag I've ever had. I think, like, I think bar none. Like, I want to say it's my favorite whiskey, but it's not even my favorite whiskey. It's like, it's like in a class of its own. It's like, this is my favorite special whiskey that's i don't know like it's it's it, it takes me to such a different place that after a couple sips that that finish it it's starting to resolve into something and i'm i'm still trying to figure out what it is it's like well it's not it's not the caramel kind of thing but it's mm -hmm. adjacent a little bit i mean there's a sweetness to it it's like prune juice mixed with gasoline. That it's like prune juice that's gone off, and that is mixed with gasoline, but in a good way. It's not a high test gasoline, though. It is a. It's like a go kart gasoline. <laughs> like lawnmower engine kind of kerosene sort of thing. 
I, I, funky, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, this was bourbon cask only, it looks like. First fill and refill bourbon casks. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't get a little bit of something at the very end, you know, right as it's going down. There's a little bit of a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed yourself. I, I feel like it's a strange place in the process to do to experiment. You know what I mean? Like the fermentation. Like I feel like it just changed something, but I, it's hard for me to tell what it's changed. It's like when you're playing around with like a synthesizer and you like, are, you know, you're, you're playing the keyboard and it makes a sound and then you turn one of those knobs and it's like, I changed, like, you know, it changed something in the music and, or the sound, but I don't know what it changed really, you know, like. Almost like it's changed at a subtonal level, so you're feeling it more than tasting it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna science it. Oh, I haven't science. Yes, I'm gonna try it. I have to because this is so interesting. Oh. Bing. This is definitely a science for me. Wow, I feel like it got smokier, and there's more of that organic nose. Um, I kind of like it. Only because it's so weird and it made it weirder. The, the flavor became more rounded, like that kind of caramel adjacent thing kind of resolved itself into, oh, yes, I'm caramel, then, but then with like a wafer embedded in me or something. <laughs> oh my God. It like for me, the flavor it like eliminated the sweetness and now it's just like sour. It's like hmm. weirdly sour. Did it did shave a little bit of the of the gasoline edge off of it though? Kind of sanded it down oh a little God, bit. So interesting. So weird. So what a weird. weird start to our whiskey journey for the day. Oh, it kind of well, reminds like, me of those of when we had like the whiskey where we we did like the bad whiskey show and we had some of those things that were weird like organic and like infused stuff or like you know because it, it tastes very organic in a weird way yeah I, there's just what, whatever that organic thing is is definitely front and center here it's that funky this thing has uh, fermented or rotted and just gotten to that real funky spot but not in any kind of negative way it's well, like the lord word if rot it, <laughs> yeah, it's like Malort if Malort were good. Malort is not good. It is not good. Oh. Hmm. Huh. So, so Gary, you're currently living in, in a place that I didn't even know was a place in California. I mean, I, I've, I've heard of, um, you know, that, that lake you're near. Yeah. But I'd never heard of uh, the, the town that you're in. Lake Arrowhead. Oh, yeah, Blue Jay. I've heard of the lake, but Blue yeah. Jay, I've never heard of Blue, Blue Jay. Jay. <clears throat> Blue Jay is literally bordering on it. Um, I'm in Lake Arrowhead, but I'm a mile from the border of Blue Jay, you know, which is oh, like see. So a the, little the, wide spot on the road, basically. From Your post office box is there. Yeah. I see. I mean, that's where the grocery store is, the, the post office, the Rite Aid, you know, that's, it's like the little city center. And then there's another Arrowhead Village, which is a few other stores, but more kind of gift shop and, and tourist stores. And so on and so on. So I called you a mountain man at the beginning. I think that's, I think I've <laughs> totally nailed it. I feel like he needs more of a beard to be a real mountain man. And you need to have a bear friend. You know, a friend who's a bear. I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to befriend the, uh, the local crows. They're, um, that's very popular. How has it been going? Um, you watch that video that we all watched, I'm assuming during the, pandemic. I've seen several videos, Yeah. you know, and, and, and the, the, the information is not always consistent with each other, but, um, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they don't run away or they don't fly away when, you know, when I, when I come as close anymore, but they don't. You know, I, my dream is to have them like perch on my arm, you know, like, in, that's uh, like, that's like a year, like you have to spend a year or more trying to find them, I think. Shawshank yeah. Redemption, you know, I want Jake sitting on my shoulder. 
what are you what are you putting out for them um oh the wait the whiskey enthusiast says does thad have notes on the fur mutation unfortunately thad <sighs> is not drinking along with us today i would i would love to hear what thad has to say about this but um maybe maybe we can get like him to write down his notes at some point and we can post them somewhere because um yeah we'll maybe put his comments in the in the youtube yeah because i want to i want to hear them yeah uh, i'm so i'm sorry gary so how are you befriending these these birds um it's it's like kind of an unpleasant method um because i'm also <laughs> in a uh uh in a campaign to um to to get rid of um, you know the, the little burrowing ground squirrels that are undercutting my patio and my stairs and, and all that. So when I trap them, I like take them out and you know set them at the foot of the driveway. And within like 10 to 15 minutes, the crows are there and they're taking them away. So I've heard that peanuts work as well. <laughs> and peanuts don't scream when they die. No, as far <laughs> as we know, as far as we know, I'm not in any you know, audible range. The, the little ground squirrels also known as chipmunks, are really adorable, but I hate those little fuckers, so. Don't they, they have British accents, don't they? It's like, oh no, after you, sir, no, please. You I know, sir. after you, Chip. No, no, Dale, yes. Um, hey, let's move on. Tomorrow, Number two. Yeah, we gotta move forward to the next. We gotta move uh, forward. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to make you- How dare we, right now, Gary. how dare we? Gary, you're gonna have to have another delicious whiskey, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just, it's awful of us. This one is, um, Adele Ewan, it's a sovereign cask. Uh, it's a Speyside sherry butt, and it is 10 years old at 59.4%. Interesting, quite, quite uh, pale for a sherry. It is quite pale yeah. for a sherry butt. Yeah. But I think but you I might just, find it in the notes. And Sovereign, another single, uh, another- uh, Independent just, bottler, yeah. Independent bottler, yeah. Yeah, it's a Hunter Lang company. Thanks for helping me find those words, Andrew. <laughs> that smells like sherry though. Oh, it sure does. Yeah, yeah, and and this this is just a you know we keep reinforcing it. So the color does not necessarily mean what you're going to find in it. It's interesting to note, but it's not <sighs> the be all and end all. Although this has like a lot of light, like, like uh, usually with a sherry, I get like a deeper sort of richer, and this is like cotton candy it's light, a light. Ta taffy, you know, vanilla. Like it's it's very sparkly up there. Yeah, and usually I can find like chocolate covered something and this is just like a chocolate powder covering. Unless it's white Sorry. chocolate, but good white chocolate because I hate white chocolate. What did you say, Gary? We missed it. Sorry. I was laughing at the, 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 I hate white chocolate unless it's good white chocolate. Well, no, it's good if it's, if it, that, if it's in a whiskey. It's like, you oh, know, okay, I wouldn't okay. drink, I wouldn't drink gasoline, but if the smell of gasoline is a whiskey, it's like. Hmm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I said, would you would you say floral at all? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I can see like those little kind of floral suckles, you know, that you would you know yeah, you would yeah. suck on as a kid to suck the sweetness out of, right? Oh, I fucking love whiskey. <laughs> You took the I words mean, it, right out of my mouth. <laughs> it's it's um, you know kind of um, amazing to me. This is the this is the only alcoholic beverage that I can sit and just like sit under my nose for like half an hour and be perfectly yep. happy. Yep. And this so is this, definitely it, a nose that's, one. That's an experience in itself that it's like totally great. Yeah, I am excited to taste this only because. Um, I this my favorite so fucking good. Yeah. Well, but I love I love the nose. When I take my first sip, I love going right back to the nose. Like that's my favorite nose. Is like mm -hmm. I love, you know, it's it I don't know, it, like it, there's like a synergy there. Not for sipping. Mm. Oh boy. This is my favorite whiskey. This is 59%. We've gone up by 10, by like 10%. So, and right. I feel it. This, I feel but, it too. But that but nose it, is misleading because because I did not expect this yeah. much heat. A lot of heat, but oh, I, I still don't feel like it's overwhelming. It, it The flavor is right there for me. It's like taking a bite of a sandwich that has something sweet in it, you know, like raisins or cranberries or something, but something, you know, but something, but in a good way, you know, normally you're like, oh, who's putting something sweet in a sandwich? But but like this cook nailed it. Oh, 
Damn, yeah, good. I can see like a tuna sandwich and you get that cranberry crunch suddenly and that little burst. Yeah. That, that kind of surprising, but also very pleasant. It's got, yeah, a nice savory sweet thing going on, which is unusual because the nose is very sweet, but the taste the is like. The nose is sweet. Yeah. The nose is like traipsing through candy and flowers. And this is like mm, a little, a little bit of bacon in here or something. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Some sort of like, maybe like bacon that's, that's cooked in, you know, maple. Like there's definitely some, some sweet, mm, sweet savory. Bacon. Yeah. I was getting a little maple. Oh, I want maple syrup bacon. Excuse me. Yeah, but there's a tang in there too, like something tangy, tang, tangy, tangy. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the finish on it has still got that little zing to it. Like passion fruit, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's an exotic fruit. It's, it's not it's mango. Fruit. It'd be like passion fruit or um, maybe papaya. I, I, I. For me, mango is the, the association when as soon as you said that, it was like, ah, resolved into that. I just, like, for me, mango, like, mango is my favorite fruit. <coughs> so I feel like I have a good handle on mango, and I just, it's not quite, but there is a little bit of mango in there. Like, dry, maybe dried mango. Oh. Hmm. This is taking me someplace. Oh, that's that wonderful nostalgia trip like my, my grandparents cottage in new brunswick well, you just let it kind things. of slide across the tongue it's got a thickness to it as well yeah it's you're taking a bite of it yeah my, i mean is it my, well yeah it kind of does look a touch oily this is my favorite whiskey for sure oh yeah if I was going to build oh. a house in this, this would be this would actually be a water park in a mall. It would be the Edmonton Mall. That's that's the house it would be, a water park in a mall. A mall of America, I, yeah. Nah, it's a Canadian mall. It's got to be the mall of Ed, Edmonton Mall, I think. It's Edmonton Mall. Yeah. There's something more wholesome. Like as far as malls go, <laughs> like they're not great, but Canadian malls are a little more wholesome. Now, the first time I had blackberry pie was at my grandma's cottage. <laughs> This reminds me of a blackberry pie. It's got the savory. It's got that kind of different kind of sweetness on the inside, kind of a, a dark syrupy sweetness. And grandma. Oh, grandma. Man, I do. I do really want the pie that this, that this makes oh. me think of. Like I want a slice of that pie right now so badly. Yeah. If you can make this pie, you're doing good business. Mm. Do we have to try water in it? Ice cream. I think we do have to try water in it. I mean, it's it's fifty nine percent. Like we're not doing that yet, though, are we? I guess we. we do I I am low enough that I'm doing it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna sip a little more. I'll, little more I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait and see what you say, Andrew. Is it? Yeah, this is great. This is a nose. Yeah, like you were saying, Gary. I could just sit in this nose and I could just smell this for half an hour. <laughs> The, yeah, the nose get, I think gets a little dustier oh. and funkier, but it's still pretty good. Gary, Gary just scienced it. Yep. Boink. Did you put two drops in? Big. I put two in. Yeah, Gary. <sighs> oh, I might as well put an ice cube in. Right? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> Unscientific. Gurgle, 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 gurgle. Now you're a control group. <laughs> Oh boy, this is so. I love that just a little bit of fruity Whoa. sourness. What is that? Whoa! Interesting. Um, wow, something happened with the nose. So you both scienced it, right? That's what's going on yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, it's hotter in the finish. It's hotter in the nose too. <sighs> yeah, I think that's the, that that that's that I got. That never happens. That happens. <laughs> it for sure happens. Oh, no, never, but never, not never, often. Never, never. Not often. Now, tells you how it's, often I do this. It's different. <laughs> oh, but Gary, go ahead. Let me let me hear your your opinion. No, no, I, I haven't tried it yet. I'm I'm still with the nose. It is hot. 
it is, and it, I'm not saying it in a bad way. Like I, I don't dislike it. A lot of the, a lot of the flavors that were there before water are still there, but then at the end, it's like you had that curry dish that's super spicy and hot, and you're kind of like getting all those flavors. And I'm like, oh, yes. I'm about um, the science. I think I think it's I think it's a yes to science. Here he goes. Bing. Bing. Oh yeah, it does smell like curry. It's got an edge to it. It's got it's got a spike to it when you smell it. That is so neato. Wait until you taste this. Really it also taste. has a curry. Well, I'm I'm excited. Oh boy. Oh yeah. What the yeah. hell? Yeah. Gary, you're right. Like it, like. I've had water make something have more heat, but not like this. Like it turned it into acid or like yeah. burning fire. Like that's, that is amazing. Like that is such a weird change. It usually makes it more gentle. And this like did the opposite. It did the opposite. Yeah. It's like, it, it's like it made it angry. It gave it teeth. It turned it into a Tasmanian <laughs> devil. Out of go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you. Give me those wow. taste buds. <laughs> Yeah, and this this is why I fucking love whiskey. This is why, <laughs> exactly why. Wow. I don't, I don't know. Oh, and I don't know if you can still see out my window here, but uh, it's, it's I fucking dark. love whiskey. I fucking love whiskey. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Is this stuff still available? Can you get this anywhere, or is it? Like... Um, I there might still be some. This was not a very because Simcoe was at, says. You know they, that they were like, "I'm going to buy a bottle of this hooch immediately," but I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I would try. I, I would check on KNL. They may still have some of it left because they had a lot of sovereigns uh, come out at the same time. And Del Yun is not really a well-known distillery, so there may still be some left. And it, I don't think it was a bad price. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with Del Winnie. I mean, I've had not Del Winnie, Del Yuen. Del, oh, yeah, Del yeah, Winnie. I've, I've I've had more Del Winnie than Del Yuen um, for sure. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Dalwini, that is also like I think that's more that's a sherry. Like there's some pretty good sovereign uh, da, uh Del Dalwinis that are like very they're like the, the more typical like dark sherry sort of sweet. Right. I blame the whiskey. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Um let me see. Because yeah, I think this was like a very recent order. I picked this up. I don't have it in my short list. So you, uh, was this a K and L uh yeah. I mean, you know, Kane, I'll put something out and I'm just like in line first. Yeah. I'm looking it up now to see if they have it. <clears throat> you know, oh, unless I spelt it wrong, which I could have totally done. Oh, I totally did. Yeah. Man, this is so interesting. This is like, this has been a really interesting lineup so far. I hope it continues. Like, like there's well, been some I, I, just like outside of the box whiskeys in these, just these two. Well, there's the crazy mutant um, art bag. Yeah. Yeah. But this also is just like very surprising. It's surprising. I, yeah. I think that, I think they're out of the Dell and actually I just, I just checked them. You think so. they're out? Yeah. Yeah, Simcoe says lots of other Daluin, but not this one. The, the big problem here is just that it comes in and it's, you know, a single cask and there are, you know, uh, if you put in 612 bottles in the world uh, and that's that's it once they're gone. If it's a good price, Sovereign, if it has, if it's a distiller that you like is generally a good, it's a good gamble, you know, because some of them are, are really good, I think. Mm-hmm. It's always a gamble with those single casks, right? I mean, you know, it's either SMWS or Sovereign or. Uh, yeah, and this was uh, 55 bucks. Old, old particular. So, yeah, the, the, and that's the problem with the independent bottlers. And I know that, you know, we've had a guest on in the past, uh, Brian Green, who, who doesn't like to take those gambles, but, you know, ah, so good. 
Gotta take those gambles. When when you get it and it, it turns out like this and it was only yeah, you gotta take those gambles. Amortize it. I mean the 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 worst part of those gambles is oh, that was awesome and there's no more. Yeah, that's that's when you go oh right. shit I sh maybe I shouldn't have. And, and then that's the, the best part is like oh I've got a pretty good whiskey and I guess yeah. you know. Oh, I just merely enjoyed that. I didn't just fall off the chair. <laughs> it didn't blow my brain. It. I didn't I didn't blow my brains gather. out and make me regret that I only bought one bottle. That's the right. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, guess what time it is? Time for whiskey number three. It's the time that I fucking love whiskey as well. All right, Bunahaven. This one here, SMWS ten dot two one one. War and peat. Now, this is also unusual because Bunahaven generally does not peat their whiskey. So this is a, a more rare um, distillation that they do here. It's so seven year old. This is an SMWS, though. This is. So SMWS bought a Bunahaven that they peated. Yes. Well, That's no, no. Bunahaven does peat, but they don't often peat. Like okay. they're main, mainly their output is unpeated or very lightly peated. Well, yeah, but like SMWS like bought this cask for some reason. That's just interesting that they're like, we'll take one of your peated casks. Ooh. You know, oh. bourbon hogshead for five years and then second fill Oloroso hogshead for the remainder. Woody. Two and years. Once, once again, like quite, quite, quite light. These are all very uh, light in color. Meaningless, but interesting. Gary's already knows it. Oh. Slow down on me. Hang on. <laughs> oh my God. It's Woody. I've only got the one glass here in the hotel. Oh, do you usually do a fresh glass for each? Yeah, I, yeah. When I'm at home, I've got the. That's what I do. I, I pour them all in advance and then That's put a put a like a thing on top. Like, I've just been like rinsing and drying. It's fine. Oh, I think this may already be my favorite whiskey. Yeah, man. But that's this reminds me of the first one. This is like this reminds me of you know it's it's got that peaty smoky in there. It's got but it's mm -hmm. a different smoke. It's yeah. not funky. It's, it's, smoke. it's more refined. Like, it's more yeah. yeah. It's more gentle. It's it's like a this is more this, like this a is good the tire fire. This is this is a yeah. This is this is a freshly this started is fire barbecue smoke. Yeah. Some yeah, it's like it. It's like that that cool toy, or you know, a rubber factory, or when you go into a, like a tire store. Um, yeah, new tire, not a tire fire, but a new tire kind of smell. New tire, yes, that's it. Right, right, right. A whiskey enthusiast says some independent bottlers build trust when they keep choosing wisely. That makes it easier to take a risk on the next one. Right. I I, I don't. I feel like I don't have enough data points to know like what are the best independent bottlers because. I've, I mean, I've had so many good things from from independent bottlers that I, 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 I don't know how to like, what are what is the best one? Who has the most trust? I mean, I don't know. I don't think I could say. I don't know. I, I think, you know, Chieftains did a, did a lot of good stuff, but they're kind of done now, unfortunately. They're not releasing anything else. They're done. They're not. I think they're just they're like, gone. yeah, folded up shop. I remember like that, that Chieftains Lafroig that was amazing mm -hmm. and a lecheg that we had that was amazing amazing so, yeah so the yeah the chieftains they they did a good curation um you know old Malt cask eh, uh, sovereign you know it's the same hunter lang company but i think they do better with sovereign um, what do you remember like, when oh. when you were a kid like like kindergarten through maybe second grade and they had those those red balls at school, you know, they're kind of like a, uh, a textured that make the, the, the point, point, point when you, oh, when you the murder them. balls. Yeah. Yes. The fun balls. The fun, I have the happy fun ball. Yeah. You must be Canadian in Canada. They were murder balls in America. They played murder ball balls. with them. Have the happy fun ball. Okay. I'm going in. I'm going Do in. not expose happy fun ball to sunlight. Do not drop happy fun ball. Do not get happy fun ball wet. Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. Do not, Do not stare directly in, into Happy Fun Ball. Do not. Absolutely my favorite whiskey. This is amazing. We haven't moved on. This is 59.9 as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think Joseph might agree. Oh, wow. I like this pretty much a lot to the point where it is my favorite fucking whiskey. <laughs> 
Oh boy. I'm detecting that is a journey. Here. This reminds me of that fucking Chieftain's Lafroig. Like this is that good. This is that good. Holy, holy moly. This tastes like a Lafroig. Like this is a Boon Robin. What the hell? Yeah, it's, it feels a little more um I don't know. I mean Lafroig Lafroig is a punch you in the face kind of Pete. And this is this has got a little bit something extra to it. Yeah, but I'm talking about like 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 not just a standard Lafroig, but like like the Chieftain's Lafroig. Like that was special. Cause I like I I I Lafroig is where I started when I first started drinking scotch. <laughs> but to me, it's like a cartoon scotch now. Like it's like I like it, but it's like it's it's I don't know. It's like wait a minute, I feel like I just insulted Gary. I said it was a cartoon no, scotch. No, no, I'm 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 listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you finally got his attention. But Lafroy yeah. has like these, like, you know, some nice flavors, but it's like, bloop, bloop, bloop. but like, I want to have like a symphony, you know, like this is, this is a symphony. Are you saying Lafroy like a symphony that, that has a lot of piccolo and xylophone in it or dulcimer? Yes. And that this is more strings and. Uh, Did you ever see soon. the Chex Avery cartoon, Red Hot Riding Hood? Yeah. The, the, the hot little number dancing and the wolf going fucking insane. Auga. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's where Auga comes from, actually. From from Tex? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. From that cartoon, the Auga. I think that's the first time it was ever done. <laughs> I, I'm I'm unsure of that. I mean, probably <laughs> probably that or Droopy or, or something. You know, one of, or one it, of it the may have been how car horns sounded back in the 20s oh yeah and... there's that well yeah but it's from car horns but i mean putting it into like that in like i'm turned on uh, like, yeah. yeah and then kicking his own head and yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah, it's kind of this yeah i'd kick my own head for this <laughs> um yeah this is like i just I, like i know the next one's going to be great but i just want to stay here like this has been a good this has been, a, this has been an amazing show like each one of like, I, I want to just hang out at this whiskey and not move on to the next one and, and yeah i i think everyone uh, owes it to themselves to not just go back to the same whiskey all the time to go and try the stories you've never heard of to kind of understand the flavor profile to try some of these um, independent bottlers and just explore the space. This is like the Richard Williams of, of whiskeys. I just know Richard Thomas. Who's Richard Williams? Richard Williams? Um, Jesus. I mean, the, the, big, the big thing he did, his, his magnum opus was The Thief and the Cobbler. But he did, uh, he did commercials for years, like, like some of the best animated commercials you can probably remember, which I always admired. You know, I always thought if you can tell a story, a complete story in 30 seconds, beginning, middle and end and sell a product that people will remember, that's fucking amazing. He's like a guy who the was the Chevron obsessed dinosaurs with was, animation. Was you know, like, the yeah. Levi's that, you know, the, were, with the, the ranchers were herding Levi's. These are for like the 70s and the 80s. When he was he was trying to raise money for his for his uh, feature, The Thief and the Cobbler. And he was doing these others, which he didn't like. It's like, nah, fuck it. I, you know, I, I just do it for the money. It's like, these are great. But and he would hire Disney animators to work for him. Yeah. Basically, so he could learn from them. He would yeah. hire them to work for him. Corny and Cole like, worked for How him. did you do this? How yeah. did you do that? Like, it was, like, what a great idea. Right. Hire the people you admire and then, like, fucking pick their brain for information, you know? Like, right. But he's a, he was like, a, he was obsessed with animation. Like he loved it, right? He's like yeah. obsessed with it. Oh, he would, if there was a more difficult way to do something, he would figure it out. <laughs> like, yeah. He did Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That was like his big thing. Like he finally right. got a claim right. with that, I guess, right? Right. It's like, everything's got to be on ones. And, you know, I want this character to have an extra knuckle on every finger and a ring on every joint. And, you know, and he talks like this all the time. It's like, holy <laughs> fuck, why are you doing this? <laughs> With his hands through his hair like this. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is the Richard Williams of, of anime, of, of whiskey. That's, that's my, that's this, yeah. That's my data point. <laughs> of course, I knew who Richard Williams was. I just wanted you to explain it to our audience. Oh, it's fantastic. 
I suppose oh, I man. should put a drop of water in there, huh? I don't want to. Oh. I don't want to. I don't really want to, but it's so perfect. But I, I also like interested, control. and I feel like it's it's probably worth it. I mean, this is, you know, it's fifty nine percent. So like putting a drop of water in it is probably going to be worth it. <sighs> nose is so good. This is my favorite There's nose really out of all of them so far. I mean, there's no damage to the nose really with water that I find. Bing. Did you do science, Joseph? I haven't yet, no. You're waiting for the... I just, I'm enjoying it right now. I will probably even no matter what you say, but... Yeah, the nose is... Not kind really of undiminished. 59%, really almost 60. It's like 59.9, so... Well, 59.11. <laughs> 59.11. Oh. Mm. I fucking love math. Okay, something, something happened. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, by, based on your faces, I'm going to try it. Let me take one more sip. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's um. I haven't, I haven't tasted it yet. The nose is like, yeah, it's kind of the same something rounder in the flavor and i know i should not describe taste through geometric quantities but that's how my brain works that's my that's my aphasia i'm i'm good with that what are um, geometric quantities like what does that mean like rounder, five eighths more angle the, uh, a squared spikier five eighths squared absolutely the sine function passed through a tangent wave I was going to graph this whiskey. I do it on a, like a like a sine wave. Or I got to say that's tasty. This is a volumetric. Whiskey I hate for admitting sure. that. Yeah, because I, I generally don't like putting water in it. But this I'm with you. This, I, this. I, I think it does do a bit to the nose in that it makes it it, 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 it makes it gentler and in a nice smoky way. Like it makes it a little bit more accessible. I think it. I think it just very subtly makes the nose. It's like a more friendly room to sit in. So, so take that comment and double it and add a little more for the taste. All right. And if you can hold it, I get like some some graphite in the finish hmm. that didn't come out before water. Yeah, it's like a room full of the most um, the most friendly and accessible non friendly and accessible things like like a room with with a wood and like a harsh wood that's that's just been sanded and like graphite and, and metal and things that are not normally like homey, but now they're homey, you know, like this is like a nerdy whiskey. It's like a whiskey that like, you know, I don't know. Like a like a protractor, like a friendly protractor, or or a nice slide rule that's like your buddy. Hey man, I'm just a slide rule. Yeah. You know what? I, I hate those bully protractors. They're the worst. <laughs> oh, Gary, what's your what's the most favorite animation you you've ever worked on? Oh Jesus. Um... I mean, that's, that's like, you know, what's your favorite kid, you know? Sophie, like, yeah. Sophie's choice. Yeah. You have one, but you still have one. <laughs> you just don't want to say it. I just don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, so, um, people are like, no, I think your fa my favorite work of yours is this. So, I mean, features, they're all my favorite for different reasons. Um, I got into animation because of shorts, you know, because of watching... Uh, watching Bugs Bunny and, and, and Daffy Duck and um, Terry Gilliam and you know the, you know short stuff that I thought was was fucking hilarious and features were really good to me and I kind of lost track of the shorts for a long time and then when I got back into it you know I did a, a Rocky and Bullwinkle thing a few years back that was such a kick you know I worked with like some of the funniest writers i've ever worked with and and just it was such fun bringing something you know from like 1965 back to life was was such fun 
But Rocky and Bullwinkle is so iconic too. Yeah. And and like, you know, like the animation, have... but the funniest stuff you've ever seen. And you and it's like you you it's like you wouldn't even touch that unless you have people who love it already, you know. Like I know right. I love Rocky and Bullwinkle. Right. Like that's what well, well, so that is what that's your favorite thing is the Yeah, you know, I mean it was it was a lot of fun. It was such fun to work on and it was short. You know, that's that's the other thing I like about the shorts is that you're in and out inside of like just a few months instead of four years, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, it's there like are, writing there sketches. Are elements you're, you're, in the long form yeah. that I liked, but, but the short form is also, it's like, oh, this is great. You know, you- I have a different three. I have a different theory for why you liked uh, Rocky on Bullwinkle. It's because that's the first time you came up to PDI. That's when you and I met. And, uh, and that's what made it so fun. Oh, right, right. Remember you wandering the halls and going, "Hey, you're new. Who are you?" And he's <laughs> yeah. like, well, "I'm directing a short. <laughs> I, I, I've been here before, but not for a little while." Yeah, yeah, because I was up there for the 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 Shrek holiday shorts, which were oh, yeah? also a lot of fun. But well, I guess I never ran into you in the hallway and interrogated you before. It. <laughs> yeah, no, this was more fun, and we never had whiskey up there. You know, that was we, yeah, that was an oversight. That, that was, was kind terrible... of that was kind of pre whiskey days. That wasn't until the uh, you know the 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 Uskabetha bar. Um, oh no, it's forty six, y'all. It's time for the next one, but I what? really like this one. This is my favorite yeah. whiskey for sure yeah. so far. It's it's pretty great. Um, now this one, it just keeping with the theme of this episode so far, Glen Scotia, pleasingly idiosyncratic here. Uh, it's another SMWS 93.149. It's a first filled barrel, which probably means ex bourbon because of the color as well. Eight year old, uh, one of 234 bottles in the planet, and this is 60.7 percent. Um, 60.7 percent, so really not much more than the last one, but no, but uh, 234 we, bottles on the planet, 59.22 percent. We, we <laughs> that's cartoon math. Uh, the, Cartoon okay. math is the best math. Uh, we've had great stuff from uh, Glen Scotia, and I love that it's math. pleasingly idiosyncratic because that that fits in with the permutation, that fits with the Dalyun, which was like that. Man, we happened, all like, love thir- non-uniform rational beast wines, right? Absolutely, we do. Who doesn't like nerves? Here we go. Oh my God! What a like jump! What a different direction from the last one. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the candy store whiskey. Yeah. This is like a this is oh. a sweet like it's it's funny because I feel like we're smoky sherry, smoky sherry. What a, what a cool lineup! But like I love the going back and forth like that. Oh my god, that's so just gentle and sweet. Like it doesn't like this is sixty percent. Like I've no burn at all. No, this this no, yeah, not, no, not at all. And it's not as it's not as like like super sweet as the uh, as, as the first. Yeah. No, you, I mean, this is your. Yeah. The, the Dal Union was, the was more, was more like, it was like cotton candy. This is like you walked through a room that was next to a room that was next to another room where candy was being made. And this might have a lot of licorice in it. It's got that kind of darker. It does, but like really gentle, accessible licorice. Like it's Maybe, not like. Because I'm, not, I'm not a fan of licorice and I'm not, that would make me go, ew, yeah, blech. And and I'm not doing that. You're not a fan of of red licorice. nor black licorice, no licorice, black. or is it or is it just black, black licorice. licorice? None. None. Red licorice I've tolerated before and don't care for it. Black or licorice, you, you get. Yeah. Because I would I would put this in the black licorice in the nose. I could but see with other candies. So so this act or well. Twizzlers, like really, this is more Twizzlers than. <laughs> I just want to sit in this nose forever. There's something nice um, and spicy in there and that just gentle spiciness. I, I just have one further question for Gary. Is this the first time you've combed your hair in weeks? Then I what? Combed your hair. No. Oh, okay. I've, I've done that. Well, I mean, this is since, you know, since the pandemic began and I stopped going to uh, get my hair cut on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had really short hair for a long time. And then I let it get long to the point where I was cutting it myself, which was not always, you know, the greatest, but. No, that's why, that's what I'm used to seeing you like. And I look at this and I'm going, oh, this hair looks pretty good. So anyways, that, that was my way of paying you a compliment by telling you how bad your hair has looked for the last couple of years. 
Nailed it. Anyway, yeah, I'm so good. <laughs> hey, come on the show. I'm really great to our guests. This is a self cut. I just want to say, like, I, I, I also like, I to me, like, the short, medium, like, like ske writing sketches. It's like there's something about it. I think the idea that you can abandon it, like, it's like it can. It, you, there's less pressure, you know. Like that, I think. I don't know. It, it it inspires greatness in a way, you know. The fact that it's like oh, I'm just like doing a sketch, you know. I'm just like, I don't know. More experiment. You can experiment more and not have the consequences be as dire. Yes. Right. Right. Which lets you take chances that you wouldn't normally. Um, this is this is pleasingly idiosyncratic. I, none of us have tasted it, right? No. Oh, this nice. is an SMWS. Yeah. We never read the tasting notes for the last one, which was also oh. an SMWS, did we? All right. No, we didn't. Hang on, let me let me let me Google. We don't them. have Thad, so I feel like we gotta fill the the void. All right, ten dot two one one. This is the last Oof. one, right? The last. One. This is the last one. This is the Buna Haven. Oofed said the panel collectively via Zoom, a bonfire of charred nutmeg, rice pudding, doused in petrol and hessian cloth, singed at the edges. Then mussels, pickled in brine, salt and vinegar chips, pickled onions, lobster bisque with paprika and baking soda spooned into a rubber hot water bottle full of kerosene. Water brought vinegar doused gravel, gravidax, gravidlax? Grava, grava it's, it's some British words. Say it with a British accent. It'll make sense. Oh, gravidlax. Oh, of course. Okay. Oh, uh, a, a dirty very, martini. Exactly. I know exactly. <laughs> a dirty martini full of olive grunge served in a fishing welly. Uh, I think that's a boot. That's a boot. Um, aniseed distillate, uh, smoked chipotle chili, and industrial antiseptic. The mouth opens with the sting of wasabi, then hyperpotent raw peat smoke. Gelatinous in texture like peated <laughs> bacon lardens liquefying on your tongue. Pure buckets of tar and anchovy paste rubbed into sheep's wool and topped with petroleum jelly. Water adds squid ink, rough and ready ointments, burning creel nets, uh, germoline, germoline, and ramen broth mixed in seawater, matured for five years in a bourbon hogshead before being transferred to a second boat. Uh, those are some good tastes. a little bit. That description is a little bit overwrought. I, th I think it's a little more over overcomplicated than what we were getting. That's what SMWS is all about. Though. Yeah, I mean, some, they're, of they're them, some of them, I'm like, oh yeah, that's totally it. And this is like, you're all over the place. They're they're combining twenty people's opinions here in that's, these meetings. Okay. I think that's part of the and problem. I, and I do feel I like this see is see those meetings. I want to see the fist fights. The, there know, should the, be videos of them. There should be videos of those meetings. They should right. do that. Right. Well, I mean, we I, did. I, we just uh, a couple of us just did the tasting panel experience here in. Uh, you there should. In Los you Angeles. should. You should recommend that they they videotape them. <laughs> that reviewer is one hundred percent trying to reserve casks for himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally true. Uh, I do. I do feel like this wrong. is the advantage of having the separate glasses because being able to go back into the like whatever the nose is left there while you were reading that, that it. it's almost like like be, be, having fad here for this because that like because the lobster bisque a hundred percent like and a lot of the other notes like yeah that like it's it's so great but now we're here to the glen now we're here and i have i have the tasting notes up here and i haven't tasted this yet have you tasted Either, this i haven't tasted this yet I'm let's taste it, it. Oh dear me! Oh. Holy moly, moly! It is not a candy store in the mouth. No. I feel like I did. I just took a sip of some Dungeons and Dragons monster, like an ochre jelly, <laughs> or like a like a gelatinous cube, or like some sort of slime for sure. I was going to say a cricket bat, but okay. <laughs> in what way, Gary? Is this like a cricket bat? Well, the cricket, you know, certainly, and. <laughs> And it and it hits kind of hard. Are you it's saying a, a cricket bat like it's a jumping winged rodent, or are you saying it like it's yes? Like, I yes, do I feel am. I do feel like this is a game we should play on the show where this whiskey is like a cricket bat. The rules are complicated and I don't understand them, but it hits real hard. <laughs> like that's the metaphor. There's, there's a lot of running around and maybe yeah. yelling. And British people seem to think they understand it, but I sure don't. <clears throat> uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm definitely playing this every show now, that metaphor game, that improv game of like, this whiskey is like a, a, a <laughs> chocolate tart or whatever. This isn't like a chocolate tart. His majesty is like a stream of bat piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a go-kart track. I mean, kerosene spilled. Some kid has lost a candied apple that's rolled across it. But if it's a metaphor, if you're saying this whiskey is like a go-kart track, it's oh. like it goes it goes you're in a right, circle right. in as complicated of a pattern as it can, and it's yeah. damn fun. And when it comes back but to the beginning, slightly dangerous. Slightly dangerous. When it comes back to the beginning, you're excited to do that journey again. Um, and it's over way too soon. Although it's I mean, kind of lasting, so maybe that's not true. We got to know what their tasting notes are. I feel like we might as well do that now. It's five minutes so? left. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Aromas you just have to love. Oily rags, old Polish cloth. Old <coughs> Polish cloth. Sorry, Polish. not Polish. Might be Cider Polish. wash, cheese rind, and a rusty bike chain, or indeed puffing from a pipe filled with heritage tobacco while cutting the grass with a smoking vintage lawnmower. On the palate, neat like burnt aubergines, that's an eggplant, uh, heavily charred over cast iron grill, and then pureed, pureed with a splash of olive oil and lemon. When we add water, the sweetness and spiciness of peppercorn sauce emerges at first before a hint of birch tar and clove spice dried onion peel took over. To taste very savory, uh, like a sliced smoked duck pizza with hossian and scallions. Pizza with, with I'm getting, host I'm getting a, a, just a tiny in the very back end, like a touch of black olive as well. Mm -hmm. Who has had a smoked duck pizza? Right in. I want I want to talk to you. What were you doing? Where were you? I think California Pizza Kitchen does a smoked duck pizza. I, I want a smoked duck pizza now. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this does kind of remind me of those. Um, I'm still I'm still waiting for the for the bacon maple pizzas. syrup, but okay. The cauliflower mm -hmm. crust pizzas. It reminds me of that. Oh my god, this is my favorite whiskey. My favorite whiskey. Also, I fucking love whiskey. I fucking love it. <laughs> Your voice got too high. I think only dogs could have heard that. I fucking love whiskey. <laughs> Well, I'm always like you best. Oh, your voice. <laughs> hey, Gary, wait, what's coming up? What are you doing? What's going on? Where can people hire you? What what's what what movie uh, you want to make? I, I, was, I was telling Joseph I had a I had a gig. I had a gig. I was I was like signed and ready to go. And um it was a it was a studio that their their executive force was like in West Hollywood, you know, um, and they were like fully funded, didn't have to sell it, anything like that. And they were going overseas for their production company, which everybody does. Their overseas studio um, was based in Moscow. Oh, e. yeah. So, so what that, there? I don't know. but, um, you know, they're still, they're still hoping to get something. They were looking to like, shell the company in ireland or cyprus or you know wherever they could they could figure something out you know that's another year away at least so in the meantime i'm um i'm signing with a, a japanese studio um and going to dip my feet into anime oh that's have you done that before i have not that is exciting it is. That is so exciting. It's 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 nuts. I mean, it's it's like kind of terrifying and like really exciting at the same time. I love that someone though at the top of their game, like at, you know, deep in it, and like you are like a well known, you know, you're famous for animation. I'm famous like, and, to dozens and dozens of people. But the fact that you're terrified, <laughs> come on. But the fact that you're terrified, I think that's great. Like an artist should should always be a little bit terrified. I think. <laughs> It's, you know, I mean, a, a, a career basically of family entertainment and, you know, like Disney and DreamWorks and, and things like that. And suddenly, you know, 
full screen beheadings and 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 uh, full frontal nudity. <laughs> are you um, wait? Are you working on the uh, like a remake of Berserk? What are you, what are you working on? Like not all anime without, is like that. without giving too much away. And I'm you know I'm 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 a little hesitant to to, to say much, but I'll say what you can. yeah, um, you know a a a, a Jack the Ripper version and a, uh, a and a um, uh, kind of tiptoeing into the Lovecraft territory. Mm-hmm. That's no, up Joseph's alley. I, I yeah, I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. I mean, not I'm not a fan of the guy because he was a big racist, but I'm a fan of his oh, work. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> he, yeah. he was nuts. Yeah, but also just a very sad person, and you know, just just a not pathetic. Not recognized human in his time, he was one yeah. of those. You know, he was like he was like very well respected among his peers but died and really and you know all that so um uh, and and uh, i know we're out of time but who cares uh you also um i've come to some of your haunted houses and when i say it's a haunted house it does not do it justice like um you guys have put on these halloween experiences that are just it's it, that you have lineups around the block of i want to go to gary's haunted house. houses i feel like we need a whole other episode with gary because yes. i'm obsessed with haunted houses when i was in grade school like for like the eighth uh, this is a whole thing but the, like the, the eighth graders would always do a haunted house for the rest of the school the kids and they stopped doing it and when i got to eighth grade i was like waiting to get to eighth grade so i could do a haunted and they house didn't for do the it. kids no i got them to do it i was oh, like you got I, this yeah. is and they're like that's creative i've you know, been waiting sure, my ahead. whole life for this it's like right okay. yes but the kids were too scared to go through it we had to send a guide through with them <laughs> because i like overdid it like you had anyway but so gary you're like a, like i feel like you're a kindred spirit i'm so excited to have you on the show anyway please talk about your thing um, and, and you also used to do like these um, little uh, cart racing things, right? Uh, well, would... I mean, we did. Um, the, the guy who, um, uh, who, who kind of headed those up, I mean, he was in charge of them and, and was the spearhead. He, um, he died a couple of years ago in a, in a, oh, in a sure. car accident. So oh. it's, yeah, <sighs> I don't, I mean, maybe we could get it going again, you know, with other people, but he was, he was really the heart of this thing. So. Um, for those who don't know, they, they were like little carts about this big. Pinewood Derbies. It was the, Pinewood Derbies, the yeah. And, you do in, in Cub Scouts. And the, and the sculpting and that Gary and brought to it and, you know, was like an old school sort of cart racing sort of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the little the, the little wooden, you know, you like learn to whittle with your dad, you know, and and, uh, and you paint it and you race it down a track. And you learn teamwork and not to cut your finger off and, you know. Yeah, fun. I think Gary learned he didn't care how aerodynamic it was. He just wanted it to be weird. <laughs> as long as it <laughs> looks cool. That was, that was the like? mission. Is like, can I make it fast and cool looking? And it was that <laughs> delicate balance. It mm. didn't always it's, work. It's the same thing that NASA does. Yeah, and whiskey, which and I whiskey. fucking love. Uh, well, that's something we were going to ask you because you've had four whiskeys on the show now. And um, I really, if you count the warm up, if you count the warm up, yeah. Um, we're not sure because it's been unclear. You've been really guarded. You've kept it close to your chest there. Yeah. Do you, you, really need do you to like share more? <laughs> yeah. Do you like whiskey at all? I mean, I thought about it. Um, you know, being being new to this and and yeah, I fucking love whiskey. <laughs> this this is awesome. <laughs> this, this is so a, good. This is a um, great show. This is great whiskey. I mean, this is this is awesome. Yeah, well, you know, maybe in Halloween we're gonna have to have uh, you back. Maybe just after Halloween, do a virtual tour of, of that. I need to see your you haunted came house. To the Halloween, you came to the bar where we had the whiskey tasting. Oh yeah, yeah. But we did do the haunted house. We did the whole thing. You and did the like, haunted house. Is... That was our, that was our western themed. We, we had a ghost town. Oh my god, we did that. Was I there? I feel like was wait Were a minute. You there? Because we went out to like Sun Valley, right? Or and it was La Crescenta. Yeah, and we went to, we maybe did it, Joseph. Is that I think I went maybe with a different group. I think I think I I went to this haunted house because everybody was talking about it. So I don't think I I went with you, Andrew. You started because there's a Western theme, and you went. I think I met Gary at that fucking haunted house. I think I met him at his haunted house 
before I met him, just this is like blowing my mind. Right, because you go up, you go up from the street, and there's this little path, and everyone's kind of lined up, and you go up yes. to the top, and there's a and bar, there's like a, and there's, was there a Western bar was part of yeah. it, right? Yes. Yeah, that was the yes. first thing. Yes, I did this. All right, I went to this haunted house, but it was before Andrew. This is before I knew you. That's crazy. That can't be. I can't. Be it, it is. I, I'm sure this is right. Years ago, it was like what, like four it, years ago? Yes, this was before we started wow. doing the show, man. Yeah, so I wow. met Gary at the because I we were like one of the last people to go through as well. Like it was like, okay. We were like it was like you guys were like ah, it's more casual. Like we're about to close down. Yeah, and yeah, and like the bartender was drunk. I was and, like towards the end when people like they went through the cornfield and there was a, a mine shaft, and I was like the old miner is like, all right, hey, come on, you know. So yeah, you know, not just a haunted house, a cornfield, like cornfield. And a mine shaft. Yeah. It's just I a super love haunted houses. Also, the yeah. circle is complete. This is the, but this after is the best that, show. After that, we um the, the guy who owns that property, he said, yeah, you know, I mean, he loved the uh the bar, the saloon in the front. He said, We should um we should just have like a party here, you know, before we tear it down. Because that's his basketball court, right? I mean, for his kids, that was the basketball court that we built all that on. And he, he said, well, yeah, we should just have a party here. So we organized a whiskey tasting where, you know, we had, I don't know, we had like a dozen or so whiskeys along the bar and people came in and, and uh, people that were, you know, part of the thing and people from DreamWorks and we had a, we had a, like a, we had a, um, a, a pot of Cullen skink there and, you know, and some, it, it was, it was a good time. This, this is whiskey. Awesome. How can it not be a whiskey? Good Joyce was bartending. I mean, I had to step away for a bit, and and she took over, and I came back, and she was like doing it. I said, oh, and she was like, "We're out of whiskey." You're it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, Gary, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Thad, thanks for being uh, awesome as all was. Uh, thank you, Elf Thir- uh, uh, Sorry, outside in theater. Please subscribe, like. There's awesome, great stuff happening on this channel, and and more stuff going to come. Um, thank you to Geek Filter for our graphics. Um, thank you to Arlo and Alex for the music. And uh, thank you guys at home for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. And then we're taking a break for a while after next we're week. We're taking a break for a while as I go to Scotland. To get more whiskey. To get more whiskey because we're out. Because you're almost out, yeah. Yeah. Um, slange, y'all. Slange. Slange of a...